That's exactly what you don't want to do. <laughs> What's up, y'all? It's Rob here at the shop again at Biltwell. I got Garrett's 01 Dyna on the lift. Today, I'm gonna show you how to replace fork seals. Uh, Garrett's Dyna has a 39 millimeter front end. So the methods, procedures, torque specs are all gonna be the same for any other Harley that's got a 39 millimeter front end, such as a Sportster or an FXR. Here's what you're gonna to need to perform this service. Fork oil, a seal and bushing kit, a measuring cup that measures in ounces, flat blade screwdriver, a pick, a half inch and a 9 16 inch wrench, a couple of ratchets, driver, an extension, a six millimeter extended Allen, a five sixteenths Allen, a quarter inch Allen, a 10 millimeter 12 point socket, and this is for the brake caliper bolts. Your particular model might be different. Three quarter inch socket, a fork cap socket, and a 39 millimeter fork seal driver. And don't forget your torque wrench. There's a couple of things you can look for to let you know if your fork seals are in need of replacing. Your fork seal is located underneath this cap. If you notice dirty fork oil, contaminated fork oil hanging around this area, you more than likely have a leaky fork seal. This is a perfect example of why you need to change your fork seals when you first notice them leaking. As you can see here, fork fluid has escaped past the fork seal, dripped down onto the caliper, and actually got in to the brake pads, making the brake pads and the brake surface less effective. Okay, so first things, we need to disassemble this front end. We're gonna take off the fender, take the caliper off, take the wheel off. Let's start with the fender first. Once you get the caliper disconnected, a little thing I like to do is take a zip tie or a hanger, a wire hanger or something, and hang your caliper up and out of the way. Now that we have the fender and the caliper off, the next step is to remove the wheel. Before you remove the wheel, go ahead and jack up the bike to where the weight of the bike is unloaded off of the front end. So it makes removing that axle easy. So take that axle nut off, then go ahead and remove the pinch bolt because you're gonna access under there later and go ahead and remove that axle. One thing I like to do when removing the wheel is I like to take the axle and put the spacers back on the same way they came out. That way I don't forget the orientation and have to look it up later. I just want to let you guys know that I will be performing the service on both fork legs, but in the video, I'm only going to show you the service on one fork leg. The methods, procedures, everything is identical. Okay, so uh, the next step is to drain the remaining fork fluid that's left in this lower. We do that by removing a six millimeter bolt that's accessed through the bottom hole under here. Um, we're just going to break that loose and fluid's gonna come out. It's gonna be a little bit messy, so be prepared. Also, hold on to your fork lower when breaking this loose, because uh, it will spin. Once it's broken loose, go ahead and re-thread or unthread it. Now 
There you go. Now I'm going to show you something real quick. This bolt is the bolt that holds your dampening rod to your lower. And this is also the bolt that I just took out to help drain. Now, there's a copper washer that's normally on there. As you can see, it's not here. That means it's still stuck on the mating surface up there. So bef before you put all this back together, don't forget, remove that copper washer if it's stuck up there and replace it with a new one. Now that the fluid has drained out of the fork lower, let's go ahead and disassemble it and get it off of the fork tube. First thing, spin your tube around, your lower rather, and pop this cap up and off if you have it. Please be careful that you don't overextend when you pop that off and scratch your fork tube. That would be bad. You can really see how bad that fork seal has been blown out. Move the decorative chrome cover out of the way if your bike has one. And next you will see the wiper. Just go ahead and same, pry it up gently, being careful not to mar your fork tube. Go ahead and slide that up. Next step is to remove this retaining clip. This is done just by simply popping it out of the groove all the way around. Again, being careful you don't mar your fork tube. Once you've got it off, gently pull it off the bike. Pain in mind not to scratch. Okay, now that we've got all this disassembled, the clips out, the last thing that's in there is a fork seal. We need to get this fork seal out of the lower. And the way you do that is to bang it down and then it releases. This is your dampener rod. There should be a cap on the bottom of that. More times than not, that cap stays inside the fork lower. We want to get that out for when reassembly happens. The way to get it out, turn your fork lower upside down, tap it on the table, or not, and it pops out. That's what you're looking for. Don't forget that. So not only am I replacing Garrett's fork seals, which is this piece right here, but I'm also gonna go ahead and replace the bushings. I'm already in here, might as well do it. So doing that, you gotta take all this off. Now, I like to take things off and lay them out in sequential order. Even if I'm not gonna reuse these parts, it'll still give me an idea of how things go back together. And if you do forget or something gets knocked around, check your manual, it'll tell you exactly what needs to happen. Take a flat blade screwdriver, gently put it between that bushing, twist it, and it slides right off. And then the others come off with it. I like to set them in the way they came off, the same orientation. So we got bushings. Now we go ahead and remove the old fork seal. Toss that. Same with the, the wiper, that one's shot. So you've got your fork tube completely disassembled, cleaned and drained. Now it's time for reassembly of the new components. But before we do that, we're going to remove the fork tube out of the trees and install our new components from the top. And the reason we're installing from the top is because on the lower part of the tube, there's a couple of sharp edges that could hang up on the new fork seal, damaging it. Meaning if you put it right on and it catches, but it still goes on, you might have a little nick in there, everything gets assembled and your fork's still leaking. So we always wanna install our new components from the top. Okay, so we need to remove this fork cap. 
Don't just break it loose and take it off because there is a spring under here and it is under tension. This thing could, could shoot across the room. So be very mindful of that when breaking it loose and taking it off. I just keep pressure with the palm of my hand pressing down on the ratchet and you'll know it'll just kind of spring up there there you go so you see how i saved that just remove that set it off to the side and we can do the next step once that fork cap is off we're gonna go ahead and loosen these two pinch bolts remove the tube and move over to a workbench and finish the installation of our new parts As you can see here, I have the tube laid out. Everything's clean. The dampening rod is still in there as well as the spring. Just go ahead and leave that in there. We're gonna go ahead and reassemble with all new pieces. Let's work on the bushing side first. You wanna take your washer. It's got a flat side and it's got a beveled side. We want the beveled side facing down. So just go ahead and slip that on. Next, we're gonna take one of our bushings. You can see there's two different ones. The thinner, smaller one goes on last. The thicker, narrower one, if that makes any sense, goes on first. It doesn't matter which way it goes on. Just go ahead and slide it on and over. Now we're gonna take our last bushing and slide it on. That last bushing needs to live right in here. And you'll notice like a little positive snap when it's going on. You can see there how it just lives right there. All right, so that stack is ready. Now that we've got our new bushings on here, um, we want to go ahead and install the lower on there. Before I slap that lower on there, I'm just going to take a little bit of fork oil and put it on these bushings just to help with assembly and lubrication. It doesn't need to be a lot. Just a little film. Now remember that little spacer, cap, hat, whatever you want to call it that goes on your dampener rod? Now's the time to put it back on. Now what I like to do, because sometimes that thing wants to fall off, is I take a little bit of grease, just a little bit, you don't want a lot, and just put it right on the bottom of the dampening, damper tube, dampener rod, sorry. Slide that cap on there and it should stay put. Our kit came with a new ceiling washer as well as bolt for the bottom of that dampening rod and the fork lower. Use it. If your kit did not come with one, at least get a new copper ceiling washer. Slide that on that new bolt. I like to put a little bit of pipe dope on here just to help with sealing. Just a little bit. Set that aside. Take your fork lower and install it into or onto the tube. You can see how that second bushing needs to fit in the fork lower and around the fork tube. So make sure it's in there. If it's not, you can go ahead and drop that washer bevel side down, and then you can use your fork seal driver to gently tap it in. And there you go. And like I said earlier, don't forget that that dampener rod bolt, sometimes that old ceiling washer stays up in there in the fork leg lower. Make sure you get rid of that Toss it to the side. Take your new one, slide it in, and get a couple of starter threads going, just like that. And now you can take your air impact or your electric impact and tighten that up. Now, when you tighten that, make sure you hold on to this fork uh, fork lower because it will spin. 
Okay, you've got that lower dampener rod bolt tightened. So now we're gonna go ahead and install our new fork seals. Keep in mind there is a top and a bottom. You can tell the top of the fork seal because more often than not, there's some kind of lettering or numbers indicating the part number or something of that nature. On the bottom, there is not. So the top will be facing up. Before we install that, I like to take a little bit of fork oil and just rub it on the inside of that new fork seal. And all this does is just help in installing the new forks, fork seal into the fork tube. Gently slide it over, keeping or being mindful that you don't snag the new seal on that upper edge. Slides right on. Now take your fork seal driver, slide it over, and what you're gonna wanna do is drive your fork seal into the lower to where it exposes the groove for your snap ring. A little bit more. And that's it. Now, take your snap ring, slide it over, and snap it into the groove. Make sure that it's in the groove. Mine needs a little bit of persuasion on one side. All right, I'm gonna show you what that looks like. That's what a new fork seal and a snap ring in the proper position should look like. Take your new wiper, slide it over and on top. This is just a press fit. All right, once your wiper is fully seated, now you can install your decorative chrome cap if you had one, or you can leave it off if you don't want it anymore. Doesn't matter. The main thing is, is that you have a new fork seal, a clip, and a new wiper on there. Garrett does want his decorative cap back on, so we're gonna go ahead and install it for him. It's a little tough getting on, as you saw, getting off. So I'm just gonna take my fork seal driver, turn it upside down, and just gently tap it back into place. golden. All right. So as you can see here, we got our fork lower installed on our tube. We've got a new dampening rod bolt. We've got new seals, a clip, and a wiper. So now it's ready for reassembly. What we're going to do is install this back into our triple tree, fill it with the proper amount of oil, and then put the cap back on. So let's install this fork tube. Slide it in. So you'll notice when I'm installing this fork tube that at the very top of the fork tube, there's a bevel, a slight bevel. What I want is to put the bottom edge of where that bevel starts at the top edge of the triple tree, basically where the bevel is exposed. And just go ahead and tighten the, the pinch bolts, but don't forget to tighten them to proper torque spec when you're done with the fork service. We don't want these pinch bolts over tightened or under tightened. Now we're gonna fill the fork tube with fork oil. Please check your service manual for the proper capacity and weight for your particular bike. I like to use a funnel to put in there so I don't have to worry about oil dropping them out past. Now, when you're filling this, don't just dump the whole amount in there. Dump a little bit, let it settle. Dump a little more, let it settle. If you pour all the amount right in, it's just gonna end up coming right out because it doesn't have time to fill those chamber, the chamber and the dampener rod. Just pour a little bit in. All right, and I like to just leave my ratio right in my funnel here for just a little bit. 
so I can get all the fluid that I measured out. Okay, you've given ample time to get all the remaining fluid out of here. Go ahead and remove your ratio right. Remove your funnel. And now we're gonna insert the fork cap back into the fork tube. Now, you're gonna be working against this spring, so keep that in mind. Two hours later. Okay. All you need is to get a couple of threads started and then you could tighten the rest with a ratchet. Whoo! All right. That's it. Fork service is done. Remember, do the exact same thing on your other side. Also, don't forget, properly torque your pinch bolts, caliper bolts, and axle bolts before you hit the road. And lastly, make sure both fork tubes are at the same height. Thanks y'all. Peace nerds. <laughs>